And lastly, we have the laws relating to corporate internal controls. All right. So the law that was created to address uh, the lack of internal controls that were seen at the corporate level was the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. Okay, so it has lots of different specifications in there, but one of them relates to internal controls. And that one says that top management must certify and show documentation of internal controls. So the external auditor for the company, so remember we have our company and then you have the external auditing firm. Examples would be like uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, Ernst and Young, right? So you have your external auditor, and they have to oversee the company and their financial statements, and also their internal controls. All right, so they have to test the internal controls. Right? So they might slip in like a fraudulent check and make sure that the company's internal controls finds that. Okay, so they're going to test it to evaluate how it's performing. Also, they should limit their non-audit. So when they review a company's financials, that's called an audit. And we want to make sure that they are really focused on that and not providing any other services. So you should limit, the external auditor should limit non-audit services. Why? Because it can distract from that audit and, or it could cause a potential conflict of interest. Okay, and then they're supposed to rotate who leads the audit for this company. So you have the leader and then you have, of course, the team that helps the audit occur. And so what this is saying, the new law says that you should rotate that leader every seven years. You should rotate. Because you don't want that leader getting too entrenched with the company, right? Fresh eyes always help, but also there could be that conflict of interest. That's what was happening in Enron. The lead auditor for um, Arthur Anderson was very good friends with the CEO of Enron. They were taking family vacations together, and so it was obviously a conflict. All right, so if any of these things are violated, that's of course bad for the external auditor, bad for the company. Specific to internal controls though, since that's what we're talking about. Um, if those internal controls, they must be certified every year, certified each year by top management, that they are in place and that they are working. If there is any type of of lying, right? If they didn't certify or if they didn't test it and they just said it was working great, they can face up to 20 to 25 years in prison or a $5 million fine. So when Congress created this um, law, they really tried to give it some teeth to hold top management accountable because it was just seen in scandal after scandal that the CEO said, I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea. That's why they have to now sign and certify that they are aware of all financial statement disclosures and also that they do have an internal control system in place and it is working as designed. All right, good job, guys.